Hi everyone, back to work now and it's 2014. Hope you had a good holiday. Happy New Year to everyone. I just wanted to introduce to you something that's fairly new at DearNurses.com and it's called Clinical Scenarios and Quizzes for Nurses. It's just quick and simple and all it's intended to do is just just a quick quiz to increase your knowledge base because you might work in an area where something is done and you don't understand everything or you might even be floated to an area, an unfamiliar area and you hear expressions being used and they sound very unfamiliar and you just want to know what it is. It's just a way of improving your, your learning curve. That's all it is. And I hope if you take the answer the question, at the end of each question there's a link that will take you to the answer so that you can learn some more. So let's get started. I'm just going to give you a quick example of how the whole thing works. If you go to DearNurses.com you will see there are questions like there is a question there, let's say, for example, on what is ICP monitoring. Some people work in an intensive care where ICP monitoring is done. Some people may never, ever have been exposed to ICP monitoring. And I've given you the link. There is a meningitis case study that will help you out. And there's also another one um, on ICP monitoring for the new nurse on dearnurses.org. And there's also another one called subarachnoid hemorrhage, and that's ICP monitoring as well. The true reason I'll give you an example of what you would expect to find why ICP monitoring is done is because it's done to reduce brain swelling. Reason being the brain is actually protected by the skull and whenever there's any injury to the brain it does not have the ability to expand as that swelling increases and that potentially can cause the brain to herniate or look for a way out which is at the foramen magnet or base of the skull. So one of the reasons ICP monitoring is done, or rather the reason it's done, is to prevent this happening. So ICP monitoring is usually done when pe people have brain injuries and there's swelling on the brain that's potentially dangerous. Let's go to another question. Okay, I gave you the example here of uh, meningitis, ICP monitoring at dearnurses.com and um, ICP monitoring at dearnurses.org for the new nurse. And also there are questions there like quizzing you about the cranial nerves and we probably have already, I don't know whether you're familiar with all 12 of them, the first cranial nerve is the olfactory, that's the nerve of smell. Sometimes when patients have surgeries or maybe traumas, that nerve is affected and they have difficulty smelling. Some people who have brain surgery might come out not being able to smell. It, it can be affected. So I hope you take the trouble to learn. And then I wanted to talk about electrolytes because when we work with patients, very often electrolytes, we, um, we don't realize how important actual electrolytes are. For example, I put a question there about um, a patient may have seizures due to lack of which electrolyte? And the answer to that one is sodium. I've worked in the ICU where I've seen seizures due to low sodium. And actually, I've seen patients have to have orders written to have sodium tablets. So anyway, um, electrolyte imbalances, sessions 24, just provides wonderful information on electrolytes. Here are some of the topics you would expect to find. What are electrolytes, signs and symptoms of imbalance, causes of electrolyte imbalances, hyponatremia, which means low sodium, hypokalemia, which means low potassium, hypomagnesium, which is low magnesium, and hyperkalemia, which means that the potassium is high. And there are lots more that you can learn about how electrolytes affects the body. Hope you have a nice day. Well, Happy New Year again. There are many topics there also. There are things on maternal nursing. There's just going to be endless. Cardiac, maternal, whatever your learning curve. Have a great day.